Today we're going to be doing problem 5.34 out of Engineering and Chemical Thermodynamics by Kretzky, the second edition. The problem reads, consider the piston cylinder assembly shown below. 250 moles of gas expand isothermally after the removal of a 10,000 kilogram block. What is the internal energy change for the expansion process and what is the entropy change of the universe for this process? Assume that the PVT behavior can be described by the van der Waals equation with A being 0.5 joules meters cubed per mole squared and B being equal to 4 times 10 to the negative fifth meters cubed per mole and that the ideal gas heat capacity has a constant value of 35 joules per mole kelvin. And the diagram they give us looks like this. And the only new information in the diagram that they give us is that the gas is 0.4 meters in height and the cross-sectional area of this piston is equal to 0.1 meters squared. And so the problem wants us to find the internal energy change for this expansion process so we want to find du and we can take the partial differential of u with respect to t and v so we can have du is equal to du over dt at constant v times dt plus du over dv at constant t times dv and so since the problem says that this system is isothermal we know that dt is going to be equal to zero and this entire term is going to be zero as a result of that and so to find the change in internal energy we're just going to be solving for this term here so we're just going to be finding this term so we're solving for the internal energy change in this process and we have du is equal to du over dv at constant t times dv. What we can do here is plug in the fundamental equation for internal energy. So we have TDS minus P dv, and this is all over dv, constant t times dv. And you'll see these dv's cancel out. And so when we simplify this out, we're going to have du is equal to t times ds over dv at constant t minus p, and this is all times the change in the volume. And so the problem we're going to run into here is that we have this term here, ds over dv at constant t, and that's of no use to us. We have no equation that's s as a function of v, so there's nothing that we can plug into there to simplify it. And so what we're going to have to do is find a Maxwell relationship for ds over dv at constant t. So we are finding a Maxwell relationship for ds over dv at constant t. And so when we're finding Maxwell relationships, what we're doing is we have some function z that is a function of x and y. And all we're saying is that if you take the derivative of z with respect to y at constant x, and then you take the derivative of that with respect to x at constant y, that is going to be equal to if you just did the reverse. So you did a derivative of z with respect to x at constant y, and then you took a derivative of that with respect to y at constant x. So again we're looking for the Maxwell relationship for ds over dv at constant t. And I think the best way to kind of logic your way through these is to first set the skeleton of the Maxwell relationship up. So we have both of our derivatives and they're going to be the opposite of each other. And then think about how we can get one side to simplify to this term. So if we have d over dv here and the whole thing's at constant t, and then all we need is this side of the equation to simplify to entropy, and we'll have this side of the equation being equal to ds over dv at constant t. And since we're taking the derivative with respect to v at constant t out here, we know that inside we're going to be taking the derivative with respect to t at constant v. And over on the other side, it's going to be the exact opposite. So we have the derivative with respect to t at constant v, and then inside the derivative with respect to v at constant t. And so the function to be differentiated is going to be one of the fundamental thermodynamic properties and the way we're going to choose this is just to kind of look through all of them and if you notice the Helmholtz energy is equal to negative s dt minus p dv and what's helpful about that is that it's dependent on both change in t and change in v so when we plug it into here this is at constant v so the quantity negative p times the change in v is going to be equal to zero 
and the negative s dt term is going to become just negative s because it's over dt. And so the opposite is going to happen on this side here. It's at constant t, so the negative s dt term is going to become zero and disappear. And the other term becomes negative p times dv over dv, which is just equal to negative p. So what we end up with is negative ds over dv at constant t is equal to negative dp over dt at constant v. And so if we just get rid of the negatives, we have ds over dv at constant t is equal to dp over dt at constant v. And so this term is useful for us because we can now solve for this term with our equation of state that was supplied from the problem and we'll have something to plug in for that. So again, we're solving for the change in internal energy of this process, T ds over dv at constant T minus P, and this is all multiplied by the change in the molar volume. And now we can replace this term with dp over dt at constant v. And so now we'd like to replace dp over dt at constant v with our equation of state. So using our van der Waals equation, we have P is equal to RT over V minus B minus A over V squared. And so taking the derivative of this with respect to T is fairly simple. We lose the T here, this term becomes zero, and we have dp over dt at constant V for this system is going to be equal to R over V minus B. And so we're going to plug this term in up here, and we're also going to plug in the equation of state for P up into this. And we end up with RT over V minus B minus RT over V minus B minus A over V squared, and this should be in parentheses. And we're going to be left with a positive A over V squared. And our final integral is going to be DU is equal to the integral from VI to VF of a over v squared times dv. And so the only terms we have left to find before we're able to solve for internal energy are the initial molar volume and the final molar volume. So the initial molar volume is pretty simple to find. If you remember at the beginning they gave us the dimensions of the inside of the piston cylinder assembly and we had a cross-sectional area of 0.1 meters squared and the height of this was 0.4 meters. So the initial molar volume of the gas is going to be equal to the volume of the gas over the amount of moles where the total volume is going to be equal to the area times the height and we have all of these quantities so we can go ahead and plug everything in where 0 0.1 times 0 0.4 over 250 is going to be equal to 0 0.00016 and this is in liters per mole so to find the final molar volume we can just use the ideal gas law since we know that it's at atmospheric pressure so we're going to have vf is equal to tf R over PF and so we know PF is atmospheric pressure and we know TF is equal to TI because the process is isothermal so the temperature is not changing and then R is a constant so we have R and atmospheric pressure but we do not have the temperature so what we're gonna have to do is find the temperature of the system initially and to find the initial temperature we can just use the equation of state because we've either specified or found all the values other than the initial temperature in the initial state and so using the equation of state for our initial state we have pi is equal to r t i over v minus b minus a over v squared and these are both initial and so a is a constant that was given b is a constant that was given vi we found in the last part and pi is just going to be atmospheric pressure plus if you remember there's a weight so we have to actually add on that pressure too and just using basic physics the pressure from the weight is going to be mg over a a was given the mass was given, gravity is a constant that's given, and so we can solve for PI, and so PI being PATM plus PW, we can solve for PI, we can plug PI in, and then we can solve for TI, and TI is going to be equal to TF, we can plug that into our ideal gas law up here, and we should be able to get an answer for the final molar volume, which should be equal to 0 0.02441 liters per mole. And so if we just substitute everything in, du is equal to the integral from 0 0.00016 to 0 0.0244a over v squared dv. We can solve for the change in internal energy being equal to 
3,104.51 joules per mole. And if you remember, we have 250 moles of this gas. And so our final change in internal energy is going to be equal to 776.1 kilojoules. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be finishing problem 5.34 out of Engineering and Chemical Thermodynamics by Koretsky, the second edition. So as a reminder, we have a piston cylinder assembly with some mass on it, and the mass is removed, and the system undergoes isothermal expansion until it's at equilibrium with its surroundings. So in this part, we're going to be solving for the change in entropy of the universe for this process. So we're going to start with an overall entropy balance where change in S of the universe is equal to change in S of the system plus change in S of the surroundings. So this problem is going to have two parts. We're going to find the change in entropy of the system and then we're going to find the change in entropy of the surroundings. And the summation of these two is going to be equal to the change in entropy of the universe for this process. So let's start with the change in entropy of the system. And we can partially differentiate this with respect to temperature and volume. So we have dS over dt at constant volume times dt plus change in s over change in v at constant t times the change in volume. And we differentiate with respect to temperature and volume because in the previous part we already solved for the Maxwell relation of this term which is dp over dt at constant v which is something that we can plug our equation of state into. And we know that it's isothermal so the change in t is going to be equal to zero and so this whole term goes away and we have ds of our system is going to be equal to dp over dt at constant v times change in v. And so we can take an integral of this, so the change in entropy of the system is going to be equal to the integral from vi to vf of dp over dt at constant v times change in v. And like we did in the previous problem, we have our equation of state, p is equal to rt over v minus v minus a over v squared. Taking the derivative of this, we have dp over dt at constant v is equal to r over v minus b. And so we can plug this in and we take the integral, which leaves us with r ln absolute value of v minus b from vi to vf. And we know from the previous problem that vi is going to be equal to 0 0.00016 and vf is equal to 0 0.0244. b is a constant that's given at 4 times 10 to the negative 5th and r, as always, is going to be 8.314. So solving for s, we should get change in entropy of the system is equal to 44.17 joules per mole kelvin. And the question is asking for the total change in entropy, so multiplying by 250 moles, which is given. So we can find that the total change in entropy of the system is 11,043.5 joules per kelvin. The next part of the problem is finding the change in entropy of the surroundings. The change in entropy of the surroundings we know is the Q of the surroundings over the temperature of the surroundings. We know T is equal to 297.5 kelvin. It's given in the problem. And we need to solve for Q using an internal energy balance, meaning the change in U is equal to Q plus W. We solve for the change in internal energy in the first part of the problem, which is 776,100 joules. And we'll solve for work using the work equation. So change in U is equal to Q plus W. We know U and the energy from work is going to be equal to the amount of moles times the integral from VI to VF of the external pressure. And so the external pressure at all times is going to be pressure atmospheric, which is equal to 1.01325 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Again, we know VF, we know VI. We also know that the number of moles is 250. And we use this to solve for Q, which ends up being 1.9 times 10 to the six joules. So change in entropy of the surroundings is equal to Q of the surroundings over T of the surroundings. And so we have change in S of the surroundings is equal to negative 1.39 times 10 to the 6 over 297.5, which is equal to negative 4,672.7 joules per Kelvin. And summing the two changes in entropy together, we have 11,042.5 minus 4,672.7. And our total change of the entropy of the universe is going to be equal to 
6,370.5 joules per Kelvin.